On this episode of Shroggy's Garage, I'm going to bleed the Evo clutch and fix my lawn trailer. But first, let's see what I got in the mail. What we have here are two sets of BFG Rivals, 225, 45, 15. They're for the E30 Endurance Road Race car. We have a 24-hour race upcoming in August um, at VIR with Chump Car. You can't buy these anymore. We had to go through, who did we go through? Jackson Motorsports Group. Uh, BFG discontinued these uh, about a year or two ago when the Rival S's came out. I think someone was like, uh, yeah, the Rival S's are faster, so no one's going to want these because they're slower. But uh, the Rival S's are more geared towards autocross people, and they just don't last a seven-hour race. So I think someone, uh, someone at Jackson Motorsports Group um, realized that there still is a huge market for it. Um, Everyone runs these, Miatas run these, E30s run these, um, and there's a huge market for them just because they, they last good and they don't fall off. Um, like with the Star Specs, we've ran Star Specs and RS3s, and those just seem to fall off after um, probably an hour into your stint. Um, these don't seem to fall off, and they wear very, very well. So I'm kind of glad that uh, someone um, took time and made communication with BFG and uh, got them to um, make them... Uh, get some special batches. Let's grab another beer, get the Evo in here, and start doing a one-man clutch bleed. To be able to bleed the clutch by yourself, you're gonna need a dog strong enough to press the clutch pedal down. If you have a cat or a dog under 60 pounds, you're gonna need to go buy a motive power bleeder. What this does is it pressurizes the master cylinder so you don't want to have someone sitting inside the car pumping. Uh, you can get it probably on Amazon. I think I paid $45 for it maybe seven years ago, six years ago. Uh, you're also gonna need some brake fluid. What I use is Motul RBF 600. So when you buy the power bleeder, you're gonna to have to specify what type of vehicle you have. Uh, that way they'll send you the right adapter for the uh, master cylinder reservoir. Uh, but basically what this does is it just screws on in place of the cap. Once you get it on, you push it down, you twist it just like the cap does. Uh, put fluid in here. Um, start pumping up. Uh, there's a pressure gauge on the front. I usually go between 15 and 20 PSI. Uh, once you get it pumped up, uh, then uh, you're good to go and you can start uh, finding the bleeder for the slave cylinder um, and go from there. Once you get it pressurized, then all you gotta do is start cracking the bleeder on the slave cylinder. On Evos, they are where the intercooler piping is um, under the intake. I could probably get to it without taking anything off underneath, but it's just so much easier getting stuff out of the way. It's less frustrating. So I'm just going to start taking the intake off and maybe some breather lines and uh, see if we can get a lot better view at it. So after I got the intake and catch can line out of the way, uh, I got a pretty good shot at it. You can see it right down here. Uh, it looks like it's a 10 mil bleeder. So now you just got to get uh, a piece of vacuum line, uh, preferably clear so you can see if there's any bubbles coming out. Uh, we just got to shove that on and start cracking it open. It doesn't look like this bleeder has ever been opened, so I'm going to spray some penetrating lube on it. Let it sit for a little bit just so we don't have any issues. Uh, opening the bleeder. Once you finish your third or fourth beer, go ahead and take your vacuum line. This is actually fuel line from an old shifter cart I had. Put one inside the, uh, put one in, in the beer can. Uh, put your 10 mil wrench on the bleeder and the line over it and uh, slowly start cracking it open. We should start getting some fluid out.
That might be hard to see, but some fluid is coming out. And uh, this is way easier than having someone uh, start pumping inside. You can hold this vertical and curve it at the top and you can start seeing how much fluid you're moving. Just let that go for a little bit and then uh, close it off and you're done. You don't need a lot of torque on it, so just kind of get it snug. You don't need a ton of torque. Now you just have to button back up everything you took off. Uh, you can actually see some oil on the intake track, so um, the catch can's not doing an amazing job, but it's still doing a lot of work. Uh, I recirculate the catch can. Uh, a lot of people vent the atmosphere, but with ethanol, there's a lot of uh, nasty ethanol vapors that you don't really want um, chilling in the crankcase so you want some kind of vacuum source to suck that stuff out into the catch can so uh, the easiest thing is uh, to the intake uh, using that as a vacuum source you can get a vacuum pump um, and I've seen some stuff which is pretty cool um, it's a nozzle that you weld into the exhaust um, and you it, it's at an angle and it pulls some vacuum uh, so you can basically plumb your catch can to that um, and anything else, you get a vacuum source, but it's not going back into the intake. It's going straight to uh, straight to the exhaust to get burned, uh, bypassing the entire engine, which is pretty sweet. Never used one myself. I don't know how much vacuum they pull, but uh, the idea sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> Next thing I got to do today is fix my lawn trailer. I bought it broke like everything else I had. It had two flat tires. I went to Harbor Freight, bought two more sets. Um, and at that point in time, I was like, I'll cheap out and get the uh, pneumatic stuff again uh, with the tubes in them because they're a lot cheaper. They're like half price of the solid ones. Um, ran those for a little bit. And then I stepped on a stupid valve, uh, one of the valve stems, popped that. Went out and bought another one for like 25 bucks. Um, and that lasted six months. It didn't last the winter. I went, um, tried to use it the other day and it was flat. So I said, screw it. And I went to Amazon and bought some for 40 bucks a pop. They're solid. They're supposed to be. And the interesting thing is, um, they are 40 bucks, but they're supposedly ball bearings. So I'm going to see, uh, see how this ball bearing stuff works. This stuff is junk. It sucks because they're $40 a piece, which is for 80 something dollars. Um, that's like the price of the freaking thing at Harbor Freight, the whole, a whole new cart. So these feel kind of foamy. I was expecting solid rubber and they're kind of foamy, but they should, they should work fine. I'm not seeing ball bearings. Definitely not seeing ball bearings. I, yeah, they all bore, they all bore ball bearings. So if they're actually ball bearings, I'm wondering with the awesome clearances and quality control by Harbor Freight, if this is going to be a tight fit or if it's going to spin on the ball and on the on the spindle. So uh, let's go uh, let's go see how they work. Before we walk down, um, I broke the other cotter pin taking this wheel off. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess is that one. Hopefully I'm right because I don't feel like walking back up. There's the piece of crap. I need to get this done and drive this thing back up before it rains tomorrow. Otherwise this thing's never coming up the hill. Hopefully. I still, I left the uh, O-ring or the uh, washer on, which I did, thankfully.
Almost. these come with these little rubber covers and I have no idea if it's on purpose so it doesn't squeal I'm gonna go no I'm gonna say they're just for factory actually they all bar be ball bearing and uh, the good thing is that it's a press fit, so I'm gonna go get a rubber mallet. Or, or this. Basically a rubber mallet, right? Yeah. Now, we'll see if I chose wisely on the cotter pin. Oh, it is a good day. That thing is beautiful. missing an outer uh, outer washer oh well. <laughs> yeah talk about that quality control that went on no problem that's awesome Now, it spins a little bit on the shaft, the inside of the, the ball bearing, but once it's got some weight on it, it should be fine. Let's go test this sucker out. Oh yeah, that should work fine. Heck yeah, last time I tried to do that, I just popped the tire. Thing doesn't even care. Let's try something else.
was kind of hoping for solid rubber. I don't know how this foam's going to deteriorate over the years, but uh, things are champ. Let's see how it pulls. So, that thing is awesome. I highly recommend upgrading to the ball bearings. That pulls way better last, than the last time I tried it with the crappy Harbor Freight uh, tube tires. That is awesome. I'm going to say that's a win. I'm going to write that off as a win.